Now, one of the hallmarks of a good leader is the ability to prioritize welfare of citizens. And in a display of this, President Bola Tinubu has signed a new national minimum wage bill into law, marking an end to months of deliberations between the federal government and organized labor. The signing of the bill into law raises the national minimum wage from 30,000 naira to 70,000 naira for workers. Now, the new wage is expected to improve the living condition of workers and cushion the effects of rising inflation and economic hardship in the country. Let's share this moment with you, our correspondent, Femi Akonde. The National Minimum Wage Amendment is for the whole nation, for the federal government, for the states, for the local governments, for the private sector, and even for individual employers. So I think this is a great day for the workers in the country. We are not only doubling the minimum wage, we have added something on top. Initially it was 30,000, now it is 70,000. But no Nigerian worker will offer services and be paid anything less than 70,000 from today. So my appeal to the Nigerian youth is do not allow any group to mislead you politically. People who probably do not have their fortunes in 2023 election are thinking they can come to the back door. That will amount to anarchy. Well, that's the Senate President Gottsman Lapabio speaking there. Now, Majid, from your perception, 70,000 naira is here. But in the light of the economic realities, is it ideal, even though? What do well, you, um, you know, the committee proposed. 62,000 to the president. The president, in his wisdom, wisdom increased it to 70,000. Labor, after looking at the books and seeing the reality, as a matter of fact, the, some of the demands of the protesters is 250,000. You know, labor at a point was asking for 650,000, came down to 250 and said 250 or nothing. But when they met with the president, and I think they opened the books to them, they agreed at 70. Yeah, things are quite expensive, but from, if we are moving from 30 to 70, I think it's a good way to start. And with a caveat that instead of a five, five year review, the next one will happen three in three years. I think that is fair enough. But what uh, the Senate president said, I think there's a caveat to that also, said no Nigerian worker, no matter how low, will earn less than 70. There's a caveat in that law that says that those who have less than 25 people in their employment may pay less than this or may negotiate with their workers. So I think we should get that clear. This minimum wage applies to those having 25 workers and above. So for those who hire domestic helps, maybe a gate man, a, a security man, and a, another house help or whatever, I doubt if this will apply uh, to such categories. Mm. But... Um, if we have 250,000 naira as minimum wage, if we do not manage it well, or if we do not cut our coat according to our court, our, our cloth, cloth, it might not be enough. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because if you, if you know that a, a balanced, or rather a, a subsistent uh, ration for you uh, is two loaves, I mean four loaves of bread, I mean four slices of bread, and one egg, and um, tea. Well, because you say you have more money, you have more money. You want to eat a uh, pounded yam <laughs> <laughs> with a four loaf and a bush meat. <laughs> it's still food, but it will cost more than mm -hmm. four slices of bread. So. We need to learn how to manage. Things are expensive. In, there's 
I, I stumbled on a letter written in 1981 by Tai Solari as proprietor of May Fair uh, College. College to parents of uh, the pupils in the school, saying that the cost of a bag of gari has increased to 700 naira. A bag of gari has increased to 700 naira that it had to add 2020 naira to the cost of uh, those students who will be staying in body house. That was 1981. So it's not today that they said they had to travel far and beyond um, Ikene to go as far as Ibadan or Yo to look for tomato to buy. That was in 1981. We are saying the same thing today, today. in 2024. Almost 44 years after that, things are expensive. Of course, things will continue to be expensive. In 1983, my dad bought um, a Volkswagen, a brand new Volkswagen uh, Beetle, 1,500 Naira. Brand new. A Peugeot then was, I think, 4,500. If you are buying SR or 505, it's 14,000, 15,000 Naira. 1983, 84. So, things will continue to be, and by the time people are talking about uh, increase in food prices uh, in 10, 20 years' time, it will still be the same story. Ogunde and the other musicians sang about Ilule uh, Okoso more than 50 years ago. Still. And Ilu is still lay. Ilu is still lay. <laughs> now it's still hard. So, um, things will not remain stagnant. Uh, the days of $10 a uh, barrel of crude oil is over. It's now, the benchmark is between 60, 70, 80 at times it gets to 100. So things are changing worldwide. Technology is making things, it's reducing the jobs that could be done by human beings. So with technology being deployed, more human beings are being left unemployed. And I think we should learn how to engage in services that are ICT-based, that could earn us more money. I mean, that we should commercialize our farming, uh, we should uh, digress uh, from, um, or, or diversify from a, a subsistence of a farming and embrace commercial farming. The type that uh, we saw in uh, Yobe State the other day, the type we are seeing in Kogi, uh, tactorization in Nikiti State, and also in Niger. Too. In Niger agriculture, commercial agriculture, production activities will pull us out of the drawdrum, not, not the continued reliance in, um, uh, on, on crude oil. Because in three years' time, workers will be asking for probably 200,000 exactly. uh, 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 per uh, uh, a minimum wage, mm. except we increase our level of local uh, production, yeah. especially in agriculture. Yeah, talking about improving our productivity level, as a call. You know, from what he said, or rightly pointed out, the minimum, minimum wage will be reviewed every three years, mm -hmm. and sustainability here is the key, because mm -hmm. if you do not have means of sustaining what you have right now, because we understand some states are even yet to pay the 30,000 30, naira before this new minimum mm -hmm. wage. So production is the answer if we are to look at things right in terms of ensuring that we have money to pay mm -hmm. for our workers. Yes, exactly, because if we... We need to start engaging our youths. We have a highly populated and intelligent youth population. And I think that is where the government, you know, is supposed to start looking at tapping from that particular resources. I call it resources because when once you have a, 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 a youth population that is large, as huge as that, the one that we have in Nigeria, they can go into so many things. They can go into agriculture, like he's saying. You know, there's no point saying that every youth has to go to have a white-collar job, for instance. It's not everybody that should be talking about a white-collar job. The, most youth should also be going into IT, doing AI, and stuff like that. You know, and that will be bringing revenue to the government. What about you know? infrastructure so when you have... When like once you, yes, well, no, I'm going there. So when once you have, if you have, like the youth, for instance... Government wants to build roads, for instance. They won't go and be looking for an old man. They will look for the, those who are either who can do the work on 
on the on the road, like the Lagos Calabar that they are doing. If you go there, you see the number of people, and most of them are youth population doing the roads. Okay, so our state government now should start thinking of tapping into that resources, the that youth population, and not just leave it and say, okay, fine. Every end of the month, we we'll have to carry our bag and go to Abuja and collect something. You have to start using that money to develop that population in terms of getting them into the farm. For instance, all these things that we are talking about, food insecurity or there's no food in Nigeria. For crying out loud, why can't we begin to have farm settlements in all the states, especially in the southwest? Having farm settlements. I, know, I see no reason why we have to start bringing tomatoes from the north to the south. When we have lands, if you move from here to Benin, if you see there's a lot of um, vegetation there, vast land, either owned by people or whatever, that, but the state owns the land, they can either lease it from the family and then move people, do a farm settlement there and let them begin to farm there. If you want IT, the youths are also there. This period that they are saying, okay, they have, like now, all our children, they are, they are oh, home. They do. do you know that they are, they are teaching them coding, teaching them AI, all those things? <laughs> because they are also thinking about the future. But we have those who are even older than them who should be learning these things. But they are not there. We don't want our youth population to be going into crime. This yahoo yahoo thing. No. But let them, our government can tap into all those things infrastructure, you want to build any road, look for the youth population. Go to schools. If you go to Yaba Tech, for instance, you will see talented young um, students there who are doing great things. You can move them from that when they are doing their internship. Move them, say, three months internship, take them to the road sites, let them begin to look at the new technology. They can even bring more their own ideas. And you tap into it. You go to Futa, the same thing. You, there's, there are no, I'm not sure there's any university or polytechnic in Nigeria that would not have youth population who are ready to, you know, bring their own contribution to national growth and development. Right. So it's just for us to begin to look at it. Our government have to start looking at it, not just about waiting for the crude oil. Allocation. Every time you're always waiting for that allocation, let like that money come and then from there we we'll start spending. No, we should start looking inwards. All state governments should start looking inward. Mm. Is it the farm settlement that I'm talking about? I know there's one that um, or your state is doing, something about agriculture, you know. And if you look at what they are, the acres of land they've taken for, for ranching and for, vegeta uh, for vegetables and all, we can do the same thing in Ogo State. We can do even in Lagos. I know Lagos is urban. Lagos might want to say, okay, we don't want to deal with rice. Or we don't want to do, I know they have a rice meal. Yeah. But they can, I know in Badagri, I think in Badagri, there are even, there's a rice uh, farm there in Badagri. Yeah, there is you know? and in uh, Badagri. You know, Badagri, yeah. even in uh, uh, yeah. yeah. you know. So if, they, if we have that and then they push all those things into it, we shouldn't be talking about food, insecure, uh, you know, uh, food inflation. Right. At all. Mm -hmm. Not even in Nigeria. With this kind of population that we have, the youth population we have, we shouldn't be talking about it. All the government should just do is move them there, make sure that they are well secured. We know that, okay, yes, people want to do some crazy things. But when once the, any youth know that his life is secured and he has everything in that farm settlement, they want to go there. Right. Well, let's quickly move on to our next issue of.